I'm very happy to present this work on, on the effects of COVID. I mean, on the, on, on, the, yeah, on the effects of COVID on inequality in Latin America, which is joint work with uh, Ivona Acevedo, Maria Jose Cota, and Miguel Sekeli from the Centro de Estudios Educativos y Sociales of Mexico, and Francesca Castellani and myself from the Inter-American Development Bank. So what I'm going to show you today is first what we do with the 2020 household surveys. Uh, we, we look at those and we check uh, what happened in COVID on inequality. And that's what we're going to do. But then I'm going to show you also a bit of the longer time trends and uh, some current work that we're conducting on by looking at uh, what happened in 2021, but not on inequality on labor markets, but as we know, they're linked. So I'm going to also show you a preview of, of the current work that we're also doing. So general trends for Latin America and, and the Caribbean, well, mostly Latin America and the Dominican uh, Republic in this case, uh, we see that uh, in this is a 30 um, years uh, trend of inequality. We can see if you look at the uh, and the um, lighter blue line, you see that inequality increased between 1992 and 2002, uh, kind of steadily. So in the first decade, there was a, a large increase in inequality. But then in the 2000s, and specifically in this case, it starts in 2002, we see a consistent drop of inequality. So we're moving towards more uh, equality in, in uh, the region. And this is related um, to many things. So first of all, you can see on, on that the share of the poorest uh, decile uh, in the total income increases over time, and we see the same in the richest, I have a pointer, in the richest uh, decile that decreases. So you, you can see that this inequality is also related to uh, the extremes part of the distribution. And also you can think that in uh, the 2000s, uh, you had a lot of things uh, going on for the region. You had some demographic changes happening, so a lower dependence ratio through time. Uh, you also had an expansion of uh, the education system, so lower um, education premia uh, that were going on, and also uh, more favorable terms of trade for the region in general and the commodity boom, etc. Uh, but then, what we're going to focus on is on the darker blue line, uh, which has a very similar trend, but it's only for the 10 countries for which we uh, managed to analyze the data for 2020 and look at inequality. And you see that during 2020, uh, there was an increase in the Gini coefficient. Uh, it doesn't look uh, it's not as, as big as, as the Indian one. This is an average of, uh, for the region. It goes from 0.49 to 0.50. Uh, but still, it's, it's a 2% it's a increase. And if you think of the increase that we saw in the first decade of this trend, where the average annual growth uh, in inequality uh, was, uh, was half as much, then it becomes like a, a, powerful, a powerful increase. This is just to give you a an idea of what's going behind those, those average trends. The, uh, this is uh, the story of uh, is pretty much for every country. You see that the income share of the poorest increased pretty much for older countries that we are looking at between 2000 and 2019. And the same story is very similar for uh, for the richest. For most for most countries, you had a decrease of the um, share in the of the total income. And so as a result, uh, you had that in most countries, the Gini coefficients between these two years uh, increased, even though in Costa Rica and Colombia is not exactly the case, uh, but for, for the rest of the countries, that's what we observe. And then during the pandemic, instead, we see that there is a general increase with large heterogeneities among countries. And when we look at the percentage changes, you see that there are some countries, these are Peru, Bolivia, Colombia, and Chile, in which the increases in inequality uh, were very large. And you have some countries in which the changes were not profound, Costa Rica and Argentina. Whereas in Mexico, Mexico and Paraguay, uh, there is like a, a, a reversal. Um, and you can think that perhaps 2019 was a specific year, you shouldn't compare those two, so we also show that uh, when we take between 2015 and 2019 the average uh, Gini coefficient and we compare it to 2020, the picture is the same. Uh, so we, we see that there is a general increase except for uh, Paraguay and Mexico.
And, and then we, we start to think uh, about um, about trying to dig uh, deeper into, into these changes. And we estimate uh, this equation in which on the left hand side uh, we have uh, the natural log of the income of the household. And then we have a series of uh, dummies that uh, control for gender, for the um, average age of uh, the adults in the household. And uh, these are dummies for uh, in which category they were. There was a young category, a uh, prime age or an older one, uh, the education levels and, um, and the urban and rural area. And we estimate these from for 2019 and separately from 2020. And these betas that we observe, um, for each country and year, uh, we, we interpret them as, as the premium related to the gender, age, education, etc. And what we're going to calculate is how this change, this premium change between 2019 and 2020. And then to check uh, sectoral changes, instead, uh, we take the hourly wages. Uh, except for Chile, where we have only the weekly uh, wages, but we take the the wage of only the employed, because we want to see also the sectoral changes, if there were some sector premium they changed. And so in this case, we don't look at the full household, we just look at the ones who are occupied, which means that the unemployed are excluded from 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 uh, the, these, um, these estimations. And what do we find? So first of all, uh, the summary of what I'm going to show you, um, is, is that there is a lot of heterogeneity across countries. So it's very difficult to summarize, except for education, which you, we will see last. And so in some countries, like uh, Colombia, Chile, Bolivia, and Ecuador, and Peru, and Paraguay, we see that the uh, income premium related to um, households where the head of the household is a man compared to the, in, for, to the income of the households where the head of the household is a female, uh, they increased. So basically, uh, th these, these kind of households are very different, as we know, but we see that uh, the situation got even, got even worse. Um, then, if we look at the premium related to urban and uh, rural areas, here as well, we see a very similar things uh, to India. Basically, in, in most of the countries, uh, we see that the urban premium uh, that is generally associated to being in an urban area uh, decreased. In, in most of the countries, we see that it decreased uh, because similarly to India and similar to most of the countries, uh, the, the impact of COVID was more in, in urban areas. If we look at the age, uh, we have very different, um, very heterogeneous results. So in some countries, you see that the uh, income premium related to the young population, to the um, average ages of 18, 29, compared to the 30, 44 age group, they diminish. And in some other countries, um, the income premium related to the um, 45, 59 years old uh, decrease. And um, by sector, it's very, it's a bit uh, puzzling what we find, um, because you would ex we would have expected that uh, uh, the secondary and, and tertiary uh, were affected more. And here you see that uh, in s it's very heterogeneous. In some sectors, you have that the secondary premium and the tertiary premium mo mostly uh, decreased. But in some others, you have the opposite. And, and here, probably, it depends on who remained in, in the sectors and, and um, the, the incomes that uh, they had. In here, what we find very interesting is that, in general, the income premium related to education, in the first graph, you see uh, to, um, having lower secondary education with respect to non-education, upper secondary with respect to no education, and tertiary education with respect to no education, and pretty consistently, excluding Argentina, which is only Buenos Aires, and the uh, and Bolivia, you see that the education prima, they all decrease. And this is, we, we believe, very much to the related, related to what happened in the labor markets of uh, Latin America, where you had a large uh, share of, um, of employed people that left the labor markets. And so if you think that it's the most vulnerable who left the labor markets, and so the lower productive and with lower wages uh, and probably lower educated, and um, then the ones who remain, thank you, the ones who remain um, 
are more productive. So probably this uh, is something that is related to uh, who remains in the labor market that is and, and is in the um, is in the estimation. So if it is the most productive among the no educated ones, that's what can explain this picture. And and then we ask ourselves, okay. Uh, how did remittances and government transfers uh, affect this change in inequality? Because uh, we know from other reports that uh, remittances, they stopped uh, for, uh, in the second quarter of 2020, the ones going to Latin America, but then they picked up again in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. And we know in general from the literature that remittances have uh, a beneficial effect on reducing poverty, but the effects on inequality are more unclear. And when we look at what happens, so the, the, um, the light blue ones is the average Gini coefficient, uh, the change in the Gini coefficient that we already saw throughout the presentation. The yellow is what would have happened if there were no remittances going to the region. And you see that the, the, the Gini index are not very much changed, which suggests that probably the remittances were not tackling exactly the poorest, but were probably going more uh, across the distribution. Instead, we also know that uh, countries, uh, they, they, they had huge fiscal pa packages to try to help the population. Not as large as in advanced economies, but also in Latin America, with a lot of heterogeneities, they were, they were large fiscal packages. And it's very interesting to see that in some countries, like Costa Rica, Ecuador, uh, or Peru, the fact that they had these transfers uh, helped a lot to reduce the increase in inequality, they mitigated it a lot. Because without those transfers, the inequality would have been much larger, which we found very interesting. And, and this is a preview of the other work that we are doing that anyway, it's with uh, more recent data, so I, I, I really wanted to show. Uh, this is, <laughs> it's not, we are, we are looking at more countries. We have data for, um, 10 countries, uh, again, but these are the ones in which we have quarterly data, so they're the nicest pictures, so I, I wanted to show uh, these ones. And so you see that um, the shock, uh, in the, this is the, um, the, the employment, basically. So the shock in 2020, you see that there is a drop across all the countries, and then in 2021, it starts to recover. In blue, you have what happened to women, and in yellow, you have what happened to men. And it's very, because we were wondering what was happening to women, and it's very interesting that in some countries, you see that it starts picking up, and sometimes even more for women than for men. It doesn't happen everywhere, but it, it, it's something that we, 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 we found very interesting. And then you have some other countries in which instead the gap increased, and did it decreased a bit in 2021, but, but still there is a bit of a gap. So again, very heterogeneous results. And, um, and, and uh, this is, uh, some, uh, again, some graphs um, summarizing a bit of the result. And when we look only at um, 2021, uh, these are the gender, um, the, so we calculate the, the labor force participation and informality rates and another bunch of indicators for both female and men. Then we take the difference for each of these indicators. And here we are plotting how the gender gap in those indicators changed in 2021 compared to 2020. So here you see, for example, the Argentina uh, in labor force participation, um, you see that there is, so for all these countries, not only Argentina, you see that there is uh, an increase of labor participation. Uh, if, if, so the, the gender gap changed favorably for women, which is basically the graph before. And it's not only in Argentina, we see it also uh, in Guatemala and Uruguay, and in Costa Rica. And in here we see the reverse. And then the question is always, okay, they are more likely to be um, in, in the labor market which doesn't mean there isn't the gap, it's just the change in the gap. They're more likely to be in the labor market, but do they get worse jobs or, or better jobs? And formal jobs can be a proxy of that. Of that sorry. And, um, and here we see that it's not always the case. Sometimes even in terms of formality. So when, when you, I know here it says informality, but the ones that are uh, in these quadrants, in the first and the two, are the ones where there is, a, a, where the gap changes favorably for women. So it's not always the case. And then we do something else that I'm not going to show you now, but we calculate the cumulated loss in incomes of 2020 and 21 for men and for women. 
And anyway, we see that the, the overall loss in terms of income uh, was larger for women. So uh, if, even though there is a lot of heterogeneity and um, it's not necessarily that things got worse, still there was a big loss uh, in 2020. And um, so concluding, uh, inequality increased on average by 2% between 2019 and 2020. There is a lot of heterogeneities by country, education, gender, etc. Remittances had a modest effect in preventing, preventing greater disparities, and instead government transfer played, uh, played a big role. And uh, as far as 2021 data uh, is concerned, you have a mixed picture in terms of uh, labor uh, indicators, uh, but still the, the, the income loss was greater for, for women. And that's it. Thank you very much.